So let's say you've written a piece and you've made some fixed media audio cues that you want launched during a live performance. Now, there are a few different ways of doing this. Um, the easiest and simplest way is to take whatever your audio files are. I'll just use these as a stand-in. Drag and drop them into Max to create a playlist object. Have an easy DAC and a game control, of course. And then sending the playlist object an integer will play back whichever one of these audio cues in order. So if you send it a one, it'll play back the first one, second, third, and fourth, etc. By clicking on this and pressing the arrow up, then we could play back these audio files. Now the problem here is that you can only play one audio file at a time. If you want overlap between, let's say, your first and your second cues, then you'll need actually separate playlist objects. Instead of putting all of these in the same um, playlist object, we would separate them into, for now, let's just say three different cues. You might have many, many cues in your, in your pieces. Um, and this would allow us actually to play every cue independently, so they wouldn't interrupt each other. It would also allow us to control every cue's gain independent of the other. So you could set your levels ahead of time uh, and not have to adjust levels during a performance. Um, if you find out what level you like, the most efficient way to ensure that you always get consistent results is to double check using the right outlet of gain tilde, see where your level is. Let's say it sounds good at right there at 99 and create a load mess 99 into the gain slider. So when you load your patch, it will automatically set this level. This is a good way of setting the kind of baseline of your patch when you open it. Um, anyway, that was a little tangent. Um, for now, we'll connect each of our playlist objects to our separate gain controls. You have a lot more flexibility with mixing. Um, and then of course you could just play, press play on these when you need to during the performance. And uh, as you can see, they play simultaneously. They play at the same time. Now, this is a little bit risky. You don't really want to be moving your mouse around. If during the performance you're following the score or watching the performer, it's a little bit dark in the concert hall, you might click here instead of here, and uh, the whole piece is ruined. So generally, what you want to do is have one point of contact between uh, the technician who's triggering or launching the cues um, to make sure, and the, and the max patch to make sure that it's very easy to launch it when it needs to be launched. Uh, so the easiest way to do this is, of course, these playlist objects only consist of one audio file. So if you send them on number one, they'll play the first file in the playlist object. And in this case, the only file in the playlist object. So by clicking on that message, it tells each of these to play the audio file. Um, and the simplest way to do this is to just have a select, let's say one, two, three, with an integer box. Uh, so when this is a one, it'll send a bang out of the first outlet and trigger this cue. When this is a two, it'll send a bang out of the second outlet and trigger this cue. When it's a three, it'll send a bang out of the third outlet and trigger this cue right here. And by clicking on this integer box, we can then press arrow up. And then of course you can trigger your cues without even looking at the max patch, which is very efficient. Um, another way, a very efficient way of doing this is to use uh, the computer keyboard. For example, if you wanna use spacebar to launch all your cues, we would use key, which reports uh, keyboard presses. Um, by putting an integer out of the left outlet, we can see when I hit the keyboard, the space bar, it is ASCII number 32. Um, so if I have a select 32, every time I press the space bar, it will send a bang out of this outlet. You can see right here in the max console, every time I hit space bar, we're getting a bang. Um, and then we would just need a counter and it will count. Every time it receives a bang, it counts from one to three. So um, I'll print again. 
And now every time I press the spacebar, it'll send out one, two, or three. Just cycles through them, of course. And so when this is a one, we want to trigger our first cue. When it's a two, we'll trigger our second cue. And when it's a three, we'll trigger our third. All right. Very similar to what we have here, but instead of having to, first of all, select the integer and then press the arrow up, you can be kind of clicked anywhere in the max patch and just press spacebar. And it'll trigger the next cue in order. I think it's even more foolproof and more fail safe than this possibility. Um, to take things a step further, if you want your performer to trigger the cues themselves, um, you could get a MIDI, a USB MIDI foot pedal. I have one connected to my computer. We have some in the studios if you want to borrow them. Um, but uh, all it is is essentially a little box with three buttons, and that's connected to your computer via USB cable. So using a note in object, we would then be able to see this is, Max interprets this pedal as a, a MIDI instrument or a MIDI keyboard of, of sorts, a MIDI controller. So when I push the first button, when I press the button, it sends the MIDI note 60. And when I release it, it sends MIDI note 60. The second button is 62. And the third one is 64. Now, um, the danger here and a big problem with using MIDI controllers is that we don't want to trigger the cue twice, once when we press and once when we release. So in order to avoid that, we want to use a strip note, which will remove the note off messages. This is a very common uh, little bit of code in Max when you want a MIDI note to only trigger one thing, when we only want note on messages and not note off messages. Uh, so using the strip note, now it'll only send the corresponding number when I press the button, not when I release it. Right. This will ensure that we don't trigger the cue twice quickly in succession. Um, and it's the same logic right here. We would have a select. In this case, I have three buttons and three cues. So there are a couple ways to do this. We could even have a select 60, 62, 64. And my first button would trigger my first cue. My second one, the second. And the third. Now, the more than likely, you'll have more cues than you do buttons. You don't want a MIDI controller with you know 40 buttons on it. It'd be very cumbersome. So this is actually kind of unusual. More likely than not, we would have, uh, for example, the first button would trigger all the cues in order. And so we would have a similar code to what we had over here with a key. But instead of a space bar, it's just a MIDI, um, a uh, MIDI foot pedal. So uh, we would count from one to three, and then when it's one, it would trigger this one, two, and three. So using the same button now. This is very useful if you need extremely precise coordination between what the performer is doing and with the cues, right? If there's kind of a surprising downbeat at one moment where it needs to be really precisely coordinated, you could have the performer triggered at the same time that they're playing whatever they need to play. Um, perhaps a slightly uh, more adventurous way of doing this would be to use the amplitude of the incoming signal, of the performer's signal. So you could have a microphone uh, connected to your interface coming into Max, and we would use uh, PCAMP tilde to report the amplitude of that signal. Um, so what PCAMP does is we, if you give it an argument, in this case 20, every 20 milliseconds it'll report the amplitude or the volume of the incoming signal. Um, so if we have a float object here, you see it, this baseline is actually kind of low, like 0 0.002. When I talk, it goes up to point, you know, 0.5, whatever. And if I snap, goes up to about two or so right here, two point something. Um, so by fine tuning, uh, let's say the gain staging of your input signal with the uh, 
um, the audio interface, mic placement, the gain on the microphone, even the gain, let's say, between your Easy ADC and your peak amp, you'd be able to then determine what range, more or less, your performer is playing in. And say, when they play loud, if they play above, let's say, the average range, then I want something, one of these sounds to be triggered. So if um, we say, for example, um, if the incoming float is greater than three, then send a bang. So your performer would be playing, and then when they play something loud, then that would send a bang. And of course we could use that bang with exactly the same code that we just had. That bang will kind of come through the counter and then this would play our first, second, and third cues. This is a little riskier, of course, but it's also a little bit more interactive. And um, there's something to be said and something interesting about uh, the performer triggering a cue with just the volume of their playing. Again, it's a little riskier and it'll take some fine tuning, especially with this number. You want to see what your baseline is and what your range is um, in order for this to be effective. Um, now, if you're using a lot of audio cues, you might notice that the playlist objects will quickly become very inefficient. They become very CPU intensive, going up to your audio status right here. Um, even with just these three, we're like, I guess it's not bad, CPU at 1%. But if you have a lot of these, um, it's not terribly efficient. Uh, so one of the better, actually a much better option is to use SF Play, which will actually play an audio file from your hard drive, from your disk. And uh, this works similar to the playlist object, but we would send it, for example, an open message. And you can either load your audio file by clicking on this and loading it. Um, or in my case, what I've done is here, Options File Preferences, I've pointed Max towards, uh, by adding the plus sign right here, I can point Max to where my audio samples are all stored, and it will create a file path to those audio samples. And so all I would need to do is actually send it a message that says, open the name of my audio file, and by clicking on this message, Max will automatically load this audio file into SF Play. And this will then be played back with a simple toggle. Um, now, one of the advantages of having the SF Play, if you open the help file, you can see that uh, you can preload cues. Actually, if you need one cue played after another, you can preload your audio files. And send them by sending play them by sending SF play just a, a number. I would I suggest you dig into the help file. It's very useful. Um, but again, if you need things to be played simultaneously, you can kind of alternate between just two SF play objects by loading different files when you need them. So at a particular moment. This SF Play would open this file and play it. Then here we would open two and play it. And all this can, of course, be automated. We can have uh, trigger one bang. So the first bang will open the audio file, and the second one will send a one. So with a single bang, we can load the file and play it back. Um, and the advantage here is if you have a lot of cues, it's a little bit easier to just coordinate them and load them only when you need to. That way the max patch isn't sitting with a lot of open audio files that are slowing things down. It's a little bit more complex to program, but it's 
computationally a lot more efficient and it's quite stable because it's reading them from your hard drive. Um, an even more advanced option, which we'll look at later in the semester, is the buffer tilde object, which you can play back with uh, groove tilde or play tilde. Um, but we'll take a look at that when we do some live processing. In the meanwhile, um, I suggest you think carefully about how you want to trigger your cues. Uh, if you have a lot of cues, I suggest you use SF play. If you only have a few, the playlist object is fine. Um, and then think about which one of these might work best for your project. As usual, if you have questions, don't hesitate to let me know.